What's up guys, Mike Lewis here, and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe, and without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. Yeah. All right, Mr. John Brennan, thank you for stopping by on the show today. How are we doing? Doing great. Doing great. It's good to see you. Thank you. I got to congratulate you first off because I noticed on uh, Twitter the other day, which might I add before I go on, your Twitter is a thing of art. So for anybody that hasn't followed him, go ahead and do that because... Please follow me on Twitter. (laughs) My man tweets some pretty entertaining stuff. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Yeah. Glad. I'm glad. No one's ever told me that before. What do you like that I tweet? I tweet just whatever I'm thinking at the moment. Well, you you put that like it's almost like um a staple of your tweets. Now I feel like you always put a uh, hashtag true story if it's something you like. That's true. That's a true story. <laughs> yeah. Not only that, John Cena follows you. So if that's not enough for to get people to follow you, then I don't know what is. I keep seeing people on Twitter that John Cena follows, and I'm like. This is really his verified account. He's following these people. Why? I mean, it's random. And so I thought, let me try to get followed. So I tweet him. Hey, John Cena, follow me. I've been a wrestling fan all my life. and Nothing. And then the minute I get verified, John Cena follows me. Same day. I was like, okay, I got verified. That's awesome. John Cena followed me. Last night, the Oak Ridge Boys followed me. Oh, wow. So you're, yeah. you're betting a thousand then. That's big. The Oak Ridge Boys. Yeah. I need somebody like, you know, Garth Brooks or George Strait to follow me. Then then it's over. I mean, it's on. Dave, Dave Batista, maybe. Nah. <laughs> He's an action movie star. Do you? Yeah, I don't care. Do you know um, um, the uh, the Brooklyn Brawler? He was a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he Brooklyn. follows me. And he, he's, he's, a good, he's, a, he's a good tweet follower. I mean, he's a good really? person. How long? How long back do you watch the WWE? Like, uh, how, how far back would you say? How old are you? How old are you, Mike? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. <laughs> well, longer than you've been alive. I remember when Hulk Hogan beat the Iron Sheik in nineteen eighty-four, January third or fourth of nineteen eighty-four. I've been a little Hulkster since nineteen eighty-four. So in nineteen eighty-four, I was ten years old. I did see the hogan shirt that you did wear that one time a few times actually i think i brought it i brought it to wear on our homecoming but they didn't have license clearance for me to wear it so i couldn't wear it but i wore it on the real world 28 years ago i was on the real world 28 <laughs> <laughs> does it feel that long in a lot of ways it feels uh like it's been decades which it has uh, but in some ways it feels like it was a year ago, really. Wow. Did, uh, and almost... in all actuality, it was about, it was about a month ago. <laughs> we were living back in the same house with the same people just a year, you know, a month ago. And it felt like we had, you know, maybe gone away for a year or two and then come back. It was, it was really uncanny. I feel like if you live something out and then say you uh, embark on something that is either similar or the same thing as what you embarked on a while back, it almost like in a way those memories start to like come back and piece themselves together, almost like a puzzle. Is that like kind of what happened? Do you feel like once you uh, showed up yeah. for that homecoming, everything started to come back? Yeah, it was so weird. I mean, we were standing in the same kitchen. Um you know, same counter, having a conversation across. I mean, just we would walk upstairs and the pool table's there, probably a different pool table, but in the same spot. And everything just comes back, every conversation, because not only was it on TV and there's a, there's a television scene about it, but there's an actual memory from, OK, well, I remember seeing it on TV, but I remember standing here saying this to you before it was on TV. So a lot of emotions and a lot of memories. And then, you know, you go up on the third floor where our bedrooms were and, you know, there's the hallway where the whole blanket scene happened. And we're like, Oh my gosh, this is right where Beth hit her head on the door. And, and I I got down and did the one, two, three WWE count. I mean, it was just, I actually slept in, not in the same bed because it's a new bed, but the same exact 
bedroom and same exact location where my bed was uh, underneath the same window. So to do that 28 years later, it's, it's like going to your childhood home and spending a week. I mean, how weird would that be? That that just gives me chills hearing about it, you know, and I'm not even like the guy going to live there. You know? <laughs> Awesome. Like, uh, I jumped at the opportunity when I saw the New York homecoming, I was immediately thinking, I hope they do ours. Surely they're going to do ours. We're next. I mean, we're next. So they're going to call us and do ours. And they did. And, uh, it was, it was kind of a long process. Um, but, um, uh, we, we got the call and there we were. Were you, who were you shocked maybe to see? Were you like fully expecting, oh, we're going to get the gang together? Or were you like, you know, I think this person might not, uh, might not make it? Uh, I was surprised um, to see Tammy, I think, because she's, like her shirt says, booked and busy. You know, <laughs> she's, she's got a lot of TV shows. But um, there's something about going back to where you very first started. And... I mean, no matter how big she gets on social media or with all of her uh, endeavors in television shows, which are many, uh, the real world is where she started being on TV. And so that is a memory that none of us can ever erase. And it's it when you really sit down and think about it, you might say, eh, I don't want to go back and do that again. But when you really think about it, yeah, you do. I mean, that's not something you want to pass up. That's something that not everybody gets to do it's it's got to be honestly the craziest thing you've ever done in your life name something crazier than being on a reality show that you've done probably nothing and you, you know to have the chance to go back and 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 almost 29 years later and say okay let's do this again with the same people in the same place it it starts to be pretty cool once you start to think about it no, definitely. How far into the process, maybe, did you guys know that she was going to be showing up? We didn't know who was going to show up until we got there. I mean, I had some ideas. Uh, well, I mean, at first, the idea was we want everybody to come and, and it'll be a reunion with everybody. And so that's, that's, your, that's your initial hope. And then, um, you know, you don't really know, but you know, hey, enough people have said yes, because we're going forward with it. You know, I'm flying to Los Angeles, so... Um, Somebody's going to show up and uh, they really don't give you any details. Of course, you know, you're talking about 1993. So I didn't even own a cell phone in 1993. Not until 1998 did I get, a, you know, the big cell phone. So, I mean, we didn't have mobile numbers. We didn't have, hey, what's your Twitter? Let me text you. Let me text you. I didn't even hear the word let me text you until what, 2000, 2001? When was that a thing? <laughs> we lived life in the 90s with pagers. I mean, you remember the iconic see, uh, scene in the first New York season where Julie says, why do you have a pager? Do you sell drugs? And, and then, of course, I had to repeat that to David on my season. His beeper went off. I said, why do you have a, a, a beeper? Do you sell drugs? And he's like, that's racist. I'm like, no, that's funny. You obviously didn't see the first season when Julie said that to Heather. So they, it took them a really long time to learn my humor. A really long time. Like, I'm sure, I don't think well, they even still understand my humor. I mean, because uh, they're like, John, you are, you're so dumb. I'm like, no, I'm actually not dumb. What, what What's happening right now is you're dumb because you don't realize I'm being sarcastic to you. <laughs> I think you and I might be on similar wavelengths then because I'd say about 85% of my personality is sarcasm too. So I could definitely relate to you on a level there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sarcasm is awesome because the people on the other end of it, they don't know, is he, is he being for real or am I being made to look like a fool? And so they have to think about that for a minute. I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the trailer, I mean, showed you kind of being like the voice of reason right off the bat. Does that ever get uh, <laughs> does that ever get old for a while? I was always the voice of reason. And I had to tell him that, you know, hey, look, when I was 18 years old and you were 24, I was the voice of reason then. I mean, go back and watch our 21 or two episodes that are streaming live on Paramount Plus. I, I was always the voice of reason. And um I had a lot of people tell me that when they would watch the show, man, to be the youngest one in the house, you were sure were the one that, you know, made any sense at all. And, um, you know, it, it, people are crazy. That's the bottom line. People are crazy. People on reality TV are crazy, probably including me. 
Uh, not too crazy. I'd say you're one of the more uh, level-headed people well, in a otherwise crazy house. Well, thank you. But see what that gets you? You don't get cast on any of the challenges for being level-headed. They want all idiots. <laughs> hey, true wow. story. That's a true story. Hashtag true story. Quote Hashtag true story. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I'm actually happy that uh, you're getting this opportunity now here in 2021 because obviously we know with the heightened press, the added social media, there wasn't that back when you were originally on your real world season. And for someone like yourself in a position that's you're singing, you know, like you're looking to, you know, make something out of it. You, I assume, didn't have like the means of doing that that you do nowadays, right? When you were on the shows then. So this is almost like a second win for you, I would like to say, right? Like, getting this press yeah totally i mean the press is always better than the uh the experience itself i mean living back in the same beach house with the same roommates was kind of cool but um talking to you is better because now i get to say hey this is what i'm doing this is what i really want america and the world to know yeah i mean i had a reunion with the with the the housemates cool but what i'm really excited about is I got a new EP coming out. You know, John Brennan that you see on TV is a real dude. Like, that's what I really do. What you see on TV is not, oh, you know, like you played a role. No, I played myself. And so now I get to be myself. And uh, to be honest with you, most of my life is not living in a beach house in Venice Beach with, you know, those crazy roommates. Most of my life is music and and my ministry that, you know, I'm a full-time youth pastor and I'm a, a full-time worship pastor at church and now i'm you know going to be a full-time country music singer again so you know that's that's the real me and uh when you throw me in a house with roommates from 29 years ago you know that's me too but it's like this much of me did you think that maybe your original stint on the real world hurt your music career at all it did i mean it did for a lot of reasons back in 1993 when i when i left Los Angeles and went back to Nashville to try to use, you know, the the fame and attention and all of the just notoriety that the real world brought me. I was trying to use that to propel a music um, c- career and uh, they didn't get it. They were like, OK, you're on MTV and you're a country music singer. I'm like, well, I'm a country music singer that was on MTV. You know, I'm a country singer. It's why they cast me because 1992 before you were born country music was the biggest thing ever like you know travis tritt and alan jackson and clint black and garth brooks and vince gill and brooks and dunn i mean everybody in the world even if you didn't like country music just the country music scene exploded so they said we want a country music singer on season two of the real world i had to be on the real world they actually came to nashville and i was a freshman in college at belmont university and i mean long story short they just walked up to me in public and said are you a singer i'm like dude you're in nashville everybody here's a singer they're like how old are you i said i'm 18 you want to be on the show where i'm here we're having auditions for this real world you probably saw the new york season i'm like i didn't (laughs) and they're like yeah i mean thousands of people are applying to be on this and i'm like good go get one of them and i'm trying to get rid of this guy and he's like you're so perfect you're so perfect can i at least you know get you to fill this 20 page application out i'm like no and so he said, you, you, you are, you are perfect for this show. I'm telling you. So he calls his producers and then they call me and they're like, we really want you to do the show. Can we fly to Nashville and meet you? I'm like, I mean, you can fly to Nashville and meet me, but I'm, I'm not filling out a long application for something that doesn't even sound like a good idea for me. So I actually never really applied to even do the show. And uh, Puck, I think, uh, I don't know what his, application process was but they were going to be in san francisco and they wanted a bike messenger so they went and found a bike messenger and uh, you know I, I don't know what the process is nowadays but i didn't really seek it out they they kind of were like you're you're perfect aspiring singer for our show and but i do think it hurt me because um the record labels didn't know what what to think you know nowadays there's a lot of crossover between pop culture and you know, you have TikTok stars that are getting record deals. And I mean, there was none of that. It was, you know, you write songs and you join the Nashville click or, you know, we don't understand what a reality show is or what MTV or Los Angeles has to do with 
you being an artist on our label. And I'm like, I was only on the silly show because I was a country music singer. And now they've made me famous and you should sell a lot of records with me. And a major record, la record label did sign me. And then one day they signed Trace Adkins and uh, they said, hey, we're going to go with this guy and let you go. And I'm like, why, why can't you keep us both? Like record labels have more than one artist. <laughs> but um, that's how that kind of happened. And, uh, you know, I tried to regroup and uh, nobody in Nashville really got it. They just never really got the fact that a reality star could sell a lot of records because people know that know, that's half the battle as a new artist is getting yourself out there where the public recognizes your name and face. And I mean, in the nineties, I was, I had the name and face recognition. I couldn't go anywhere without somebody going, there's the guy from the real world. Can I have your autograph? I mean, I was a celebrity in the nineties, you know, that by about 2000, that completely changed and nobody, I, I became very anonymous again, <laughs> very anonymous again. Uh, you know, about 2000, you know, cause by that time they had like 10 seasons of the real world um or seven or eight and and you know there was a time in 1994 five and six where they would just play all 21 of our episodes back to back we were on mtv as much as ridiculousness is now on mtv we were on there 24 7 and people are like man i sat around all day saturday and watched you i'm like really <laughs> that's kind of crazy I mean, I was on Celebrity Deathmatch. Do you remember Celebrity Deathmatch? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are you who are you fighting on that? Uh, I was fighting. Hey, I'm sorry to disappear. I was fighting uh uh Tammy and Jacinda and Puck. And oh, I, uh, wow. I I actually won. So I called them TV and I said, "Hey, send me my my Celebrity Deathmatch figure." And they said, "Oh, John, it's really it's a gruesome thing. Like they all get torn up." I'm like, "No, not me. It's got a mullet. Look. It's got a mullet." I said, not me. Awesome. I won. Mine's in great shape. Yeah, it looks like it's clay, but it's just foam with a wire in there. And like, hey. Yeah. I mean, I found this, the 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 uh, episode and it was on iTunes, but I can't find it anymore. So anyway, I was on Celebrity Death. Somebody called me. Hey, John, you're on MTV. I'm like, yeah, dude. I know. No, 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 no. You're on Celebrity Deathmatch on MTV. I'm like, all right, that's kind of cool. Let me find that. And then there was a scene one time where uh, Beavis and Butthead were sitting on the couch flicking, just, just going through the channels. And then there was this guy in a cowboy hat who was obviously me. And uh, I think it might have had the real world logo in the bottom corner. And they're like, this show sucks. <laughs> and switch the channel. So, yeah, it was kind of crazy there. And then Saturday Night Live did a, a spoof on us. Um, uh Mike Myers played Dominic and David Spade played me and Adam Aaron. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's on the SNL. If you go to SNL archives and search for, I forgot the date, but it was, Sh it was Shannon Doherty, uh, actually was the host. And so, um, you can, you can see that online. Did you get to meet those guys, David Spade? No, I didn't get to meet him. I didn't even know it was on. It's just, it's so funny. You gotta, you gotta go look that up because it's like, they're totally mocking our intro. So SNL's like, they show our beach house because it's kind of iconic, you know, and then this is real. This is real, 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 real. The realness of the reality of this real show. And then they go on for like 90 seconds with real, 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 real. This is real. This is so real. And it's like, okay, ha, ha, ha. And then it gets funny again. And then it stops being funny. And then it's funny again. But anyway, when SNL is mocking you, you know that it's a big part of culture. I feel like that's like a, a big thing, though, like a double sword um, with uh, the real world and reality TV, you know, like, you know, you, you could either really parlay it into something or it's met with like a stigma if you're trying to branch out into music or like uh, maybe even acting. Yeah. Well, it's so weird because they uh, they consider like the voice um, a reality show and American Idol. They're calling these reality shows, you know. I remember Cyrus. I remember the day Cyrus from the Boston show. He's like, John, you're not going to believe what they're going to do. Like they're going to put people on an island and see who survives. And the winner gets a million dollars. I'm like, what? That's crazy. He's like, yeah, this reality stuff is really going crazy. And I mean, so Survivor it was the biggest thing on television and still kind of is. And it's like, man, they just, you know, kept building on this real world idea. 
Yeah, and I think that the challenge even tried to emulate Survivor at one point. With they did their own island season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the truth of the matter is, people that make television, they they want to make a show that viewers are going to watch and sponsors are going to buy ads for. I mean, that's what television is. So when they're choosing cast members for the challenge, they're choosing cast members that are going to give them drama and storyline. So if you're like me and you're like a nice guy and you try to get along with everybody, they don't want you. You know, they want somebody that's going to, you know, cuss somebody out and get drunk and hook up and have a a lot of drama aside from the competitions because the competitions are entertaining. But then they got to have some house entertainment, too. So they're casting these people. And, you know, it's 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 where are the big sponsorships and commercials going to come from? Because, you know, that's where they're going to make their money. And and so when they're choosing, hey, who's going to be the homecoming that we choose to do next? It's who are viewers going to watch? That's what it boils down to. Who are sponsors going to sponsor? It's not. Well, this cast was really great. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's really great. What's really meaningful to them when they're making the decision is. How are we guaranteed a win uh, for making money and, 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 and you know, casting us on to uh, another, another season? So did you intend on stop doing challenges after the Inferno too? Never. I've never said no to them, ever. Whenever they call me, I'm always ready to go. Because, and, and some people that I talk to, some of these re- reality stars from other shows or real worlds or road rules or challenges that I've got to know, they're like, well, I just don't know if I want to do it. And I'm like, look, you've already done it or you wouldn't be getting called. You've already been on one of these crazy shows. You've either been on the real world or road rules or challenge or fresh meat or something. Now it's Big Brother or Survivor. You can have been on any of them. Why would you not do it? You're already that reality person. I don't know if I want to be a reality star anymore. Too bad. It lives on the Internet. You're a reality star. So you might as well go and try to make some money and, you know, be on TV again because, you know, it wasn't a hard decision for me. Are you interested in doing the homecoming? Yes. Okay, you want to think about it? No, I, I want to do it. Why? Because I've been that guy for 29 years. It's not going to hurt me to be that guy one more time and, you know, have a fresh uh, message to say, hey, this is what I'm doing now. Here's my music. Uh, I'm proud that I was on that thing. It was a really cool opportunity. Yeah, I tell people, I tell these people all the time, you're, you're already on there. You're already on there. You don't have a decision to make. You're already a reality star. So... I've never said no to them. They've called me three times. They, ha- they call you for like an availability call. Hey, would you be interested in doing this All-Stars Challenge? Yes. Okay, we'll call you. No call. Hey, are you available to do an All-Stars Challenge? We're going to do a second one. Yes, I'd love to be involved. No call. Hey, we're just checking your calendar. Are you available to do I'm th- I'm 0 for 3 right now. And finally, I'm just like, hey, you know I started this, right? Uh, one of the producers on our homecoming uh, was involved in, in producing the, the challenge. And I said, hey, it's time for me to be back on the challenge. And she says, uh, were, well, were you ever on a challenge? I said, what? I was on the first ever challenge. Oh, I was on the fifth challenge. I was on the 10th challenge. How would you? I know you're on like 84 now, but how can you not remember the first and the fifth and the 10th? But they don't remember. They don't remember that Road Rules was sparked with Tammy and Dominic and I in Winnebago. They don't remember that, I was, you know, the second season of The Real World actually crushed the first season of The Real World. Sorry, guys, we did. And, you know, and then I'm sorry. I feel like I was a big part of the beginning of all of this. And now, you know, it's it's hard to get on there because all the, the ster- steroid uh, meatheads just, you know, they keep getting chances. <laughs> Yeah. What, what do you think about the state of the union right now? Because, you know, I follow you on Twitter and I, I notice a lot of uh, tweets that I could re- sympathize with. What do you think about the state of the union on the challenge right now? I mean, listen. <laughs> to me, Johnny Bananas is not entertaining. To me, all of those people that just all, their only goal on television is to get plastered and hook up with somebody. That I mean, that's just not that's not who I am. If you if you watch me for 29 years on the real world, you know, that's not me. So I don't do that. So if that's, you know, the entertainment that they're looking for. Yeah, I'm probably not the guy. But, you know, if if, if you want a pioneer, that's an OG that actually helped start all of this reality competition and reality shows in general to be a nice guy and go on there for a great experience and be really genuine. Then, you know, then that's what I'll do. 
But, you know, maybe maybe that's not what people want to see on reality TV anymore. I don't know. But uh, for me, somebody that's been part of it for a really long time and hasn't been on it very recently at all uh, until recently, uh, I still want to do it. I mean, I think it's cool. It's, it's actually really cool because I love when people come up to you and say, um, hey, John, I feel like I know you. And I want to say, you do know me. I mean, who you saw on TV was me. I mean, I'm that guy. I'm not always awesome. Like, I can't stand the sound of my own voice when you hear hear yourself on video, you're like, oh, I don't like my voice or, you know, oh, I don't like the way I look or man, you look fat or you know, all these things. But the bottom line is when you see me on TV, you actually see me and I'm not playing a part and I'm not hamming it up. I'm just really being genuine. So that's the coolest thing for me about being a reality star is um, the world actually knows you for you. And uh, I love that. Hey, I hear you. And I think a big part of the All Stars is like you want to like mix in characters, you know what I mean? Like yeah. um this is how this show like originated because we had different characters, you know, someone's getting typecasted as this, someone's getting typecasted as that. Whereas I feel like if you cast a lot of people that are like all the similar traits, like they all just like hook up, party, whatever the case may be, you're just like maybe over diluting the um casting pool maybe. And hey. I think that maybe maybe mixing in a guy like yourself who, you know, is there to compete, is there to be level headed, have a good time, but you know is normal is a bad I, thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I mean but the fact that that's not what they cast and they keep casting the same old party animals until they win, it seems like they just get to stay on until they win anymore, to be honest. And uh, I don't have anything against those guys. Mark Long is a good friend of mine. I love him. Uh, Darrell, I uh, I was on Inferno 2 with him, and I, I got a hold of him on Twitter. I'm like, hey, dude, do you rem remember me? I was only there for like a week with you. And he's like, of course I remember you. And I, I root for Darrell. I think he's an awesome guy. Oh, I love Darrell. I just don't think he should be on every season of The Stupid Show. I mean, put some new people on there. There's a lot of people at home like me waiting for their call to go and be on the show too. I mean, I don't blame Durrell because if his phone rings and he has an opportunity, he should say yes and he should go try to win. So I cheer for him. I think he's a nice guy. I just don't know why he and CT are on the show every week. I mean, year, season, all the time. I got nothing against them. They're fine. But there are a lot of people that have been on these shows that uh, deserve a shot to not just compete, but to win the money, to be back on TV. There's a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest from people who just aren't getting the call. I don't know if you saw the news earlier. CT might be taking a little bit of a break because he's actually got something big coming up. He's actually he's going to be a movie uh, star. He's going to be a movie star. Uh, hey, that's great. I, 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 hope, I hope he has a, a lot of success. He's never been anything but uh, friendly and uh, I, you know, I love him. I love him. I hope he becomes a huge movie star. I'll watch the movie. Um, but, you know, I, I take a lot of credit for making The Miz the star he is. Had I not gone into the inferno in his place and got eliminated and sent home, Miz would not be the superstar that he is today. I think he owes you some residuals then, maybe. <laughs> I, think, I, I don't want residuals. I want cash. Miz, send me cash. Or front row tickets at WrestleMania. Either one would be fine. Now, <laughs> Mike's Mike's a good uh, he's a he's a good friend. Uh, I text him some encouragement, and uh, you know, just I'm always praying for him to stay safe because you know he's an athlete out there performing all the time and traveling all over the place. And um, I pray that he stays really safe, and and God's really blessed him with a beautiful family and lots and lots of success. He's on Dancing with the Stars, so. He's not like a, a best friend or anything, but he knows I'm always pulling for him. I don't talk to him really often. He's super busy, but I text him and he's like, thanks, man. Thanks for pulling for me. Appreciate it. And he's actually gotten me some tickets for some WWE events sometimes uh, when they were in my area. So uh, I always say I always say that just joking, being sarcastic, being John. If I had not volunteered to go into the Inferno in Mike's place, he would never have become the WWE star that he is. I would have become that WWE star. It would have been me. <laughs> it should have been me. It would have been you against uh, you against your new uh, Twitter follower in the main event of Mania 27. John Cena? Probably. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Would, yeah. I'm a big Hulk Hogan fan. Like, Hulk Hogan is, is 
I'm a little Hulkster. I mean, I love Hulk Hogan, Junkyard Dog, Jimmy Superfly Snooka. I mean, I'm old school. Stone Cold does nothing for me. Like, I'm, you know, old school, really? Heart Foundation. Yeah, no Stone, ah, Stone Cold. Cold. Really? No Stone Cold. I mean, Stone Cold oh. belongs in the real world. He's just a vulgar, rude, mean guy. Hey, I mean, I think Stone Cold would probably go against your beliefs. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, so it'd be good makes, TV. Yeah. Maybe get, Stone Cold and I should be on the next challenge as bitter rivals. I... I I think you, we should. You'd subscribe. You'd subscribe to Paramount Plus for that, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, he's got a reality show. I can't think of what it's called, but uh, I've watched it. He seems like a really cool guy. Actually, he he's, he seems like a fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> you said before about uh, your season crushing season one. Why do you feel like that is? Well, mainly because I watched the New York Homecoming, and all they were like, you know. Screw every other season of the real world. If you weren't in New York, you suck. And that's coming from Julie from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm like, Julie, tone it down. All the smack talk. Um, I love them. I love those guys. I think Heather B is the – I'll go on record. I think Heather B is the greatest reality star that's ever been on reality TV. I think she's genuine. She's funny. She's raw. Uh, she's just completely a 1,000% real. And I've always said that. Heather B is my favorite reality star that's ever been on television. So I love those guys. I'm just talking smack. When I say, hey, we took your boring show to the next level. We did. We took your boring season in 1992 to another level in 1993. And we took your boring homecoming to a great homecoming. And, and viewers will look forward to seeing our episodes when they stream. Yeah. I mean, if I had to say, I would even... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say like the second uh, New York season might have even out outdone the original New York because you think about back the person. Well, yeah, I mean, who back to New York was Coral and Mike, right? Yeah. <sighs> who else? Lots of other Emma people. alone. I mean, <sighs> yeah, th those two alone. And no one would actually realize this, but no one no one will believe this. This is the first time I've ever said this publicly. Do you know Coral's a good friend of mine? <laughs> Like, is she? We've, we've become friends. I mean, who would have thought that John from season two and Coral would become good friends? But we, we are good friends. We love each other. And uh, we talk on text and on the phone. And, and it's, I mean, she's awesome. But who would have thought that we would have become, and Mike, I love Mike. I mean, I, I love The Miz. Like, I love The Miz on wrestling. And, uh, but I like him better, like, not all wrestlers, one on one. He's one of the coolest, nicest guys. But you know, isn't that random to think that I be become friends with those guys? But I do want to give the New York season one some props. They entered into a thing that no one knew what it was. No one knew if it was going to work. No one knew it received on television. Um, even though I hadn't seen the New York season until I was cast on the LA season. Um, they they had nothing to compare it to. They literally no one could say, hey, now they did this before in this city and this is what happened and this was cool. And I mean, they entered into the complete unknown and laid themselves out there. And I would say for most reality stars that are genuine, they really lay themselves out there like your beliefs, your personality, your responses to everything. Um, it's it's a scary thing to do. And uh, I give props to anyone who's not you know, hamming it up and really being genuine because you're really, really laying yourself out there. So I want to give props to the New York season, even though I always crack on them and say, you know, we took it to another level. I think we did take it to another level, but that was just because of casting number one. But um, there are a lot of reasons for somebody to say, I don't want to be a reality star. Uh, I don't want to be on a reality show. I don't want to open myself up to putting my beliefs out there, especially nowadays, not even so much 29 years ago when I was on the real world, it was less scary then because all you had to worry about was, you know, what's TV guide going to say or, you know, whatever. Now you're immediately bullied and judged on Twitter, like in real time. Uh, they posted the trailer to our homecoming uh, show on YouTube. And so people are tweeting out the YouTube link and so I'm reading the comments on the YouTube link and it's like, 
oh, you know, Tammy's going to eat. Tammy's carrying the show. Tammy's a star. John has one big, fat, huge chin. I'm like, dang, really? Like, I'm 47 years old and, and, and not, hey, it's good to see John. Wonder what he's doing. But, man, he has a double chin. I know I have a double chin. I don't particularly like it, but that's what everyone's going to say on Twitter. It's like, man, that's scary that you're going to be immediately judged. Not for what you said or did, but that's also coming, but immediately how you look. Imme oh, they didn't age well. I'm reading these comments on YouTube. It's like, dang, give us a break. It's been 29 years. We have jobs and families and, uh, you know, we've lost parents We've we've gone through life. Give it, cut us a break. We're laying our souls out there again for your entertainment in a world that's gone completely crazy, completely crazy with hatred and racism and just complete nuttiness, political just junk. I mean, just we are so divided, and so we returning to television twenty nine years later. To try to just say, hey, this is who we are. This is how we've evolved as human beings. We've experienced the same thing. We've experienced COVID at home. We've experienced hateful elections. We've experienced this racism. We've watched these whole all these things unfold on television just like you have. And now we're gonna we're gonna converse about it on a worldwide television again. So man, it is it's crazy and a little scary to lay yourself out there like that again. And so for anybody that says, no, I don't want to do that to myself again, I completely understand. It's not where I am. I jump at the opportunity because I want to be heard. I want to make a difference in this planet. I, I, I want people to know who I am. I want people to know my perspective. And hopefully that's a perspective that's kind and loving towards everybody. But not everybody does. Some people say, I'm not willing to lay myself out there again because you know why? People on social media are me. That's the bottom line. You hit it right on the head. I mean, I always bring that point up when, uh, so like someone in your case, right? You know, when you were first on television, like this wasn't a thing, you know, and to just step back into something that's almost taboo in a way. Social media is like a, like the current social media climate is a shark tank. You know what I mean? Yep. When it comes to yep. being in the public eye. Yeah. And um, I, I personally, I, like, I wouldn't even consider myself like a huge social media guy. I mean, like for the specific nature of what I do, like obviously I have to like be in tuned, but like, yeah, if it was up to me, social media, I mean, <laughs> well, be, it's, uh, it's hurting our culture because, uh, yeah, it's a good way to spread news fast. Um, like, OK, hey, CT is going to be in a movie. That's great. You saw that and I saw that like bef an hour before I signed on. To this podcast with you i saw that news that's yeah. a good way to, to communicate some information that's great i celebrate that but most of what's on social media is not good news it's hey i'm going to call you this name i'm going to judge you here's why you're wrong and let's list all the comments and see how many likes my perspective gets it's just it's mostly hate yeah i couldn't agree more with you um, we talked about this in the beginning, like briefly, but I want to know now kind of how you feel about the, uh, Tammy and David thing. The you Tammy the and David thing. So here's what I have always said, and it really is the truth. For the record, if we had kicked David out of the house for the one hallway incident, it would have been dead wrong. If I had done that, it would have been, John, you're a big, you know, huge jerk. You shouldn't have done that silent treatment for a day. But the fact was that David had had already done several volatile things and had caused a lot of people to be really uneasy about his presence at all. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. That was the excuse. And and nobody ever says this, and I'm not sure why. And I love David. David's a brother. And, and I mean, I, I love him dearly. He was not just my housemate. He was my roommate. So slept five feet away from me in the bed next to me for the whole first experience. And then, you know, uh, well, I'll let you watch the homecoming, too. And he um, he was his own worst enemy, really. And so. No, I don't think we should have. Uh, <laughs> I won't tell you he's texting me right now. It's crazy. We should not have kicked him out of the house um, for what he did in the hallway. But for the, the culmination of who he had been to that point, 
it was, uh, it was, it was better. It was actually less stressful when he exited. So no, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to, to, to ask him to leave for that one incident. But here's, here's what nobody says. And you can see this on that episode. So he's like, okay, fine. You know, I exposed you, you, you didn't like that you were exposed. And so let me, let me do the same thing. So he, takes his pants down and walks towards the girl's bedroom. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. So if you did that in today's culture, you'd probably be arrested. Yeah. Well, that's like public indecency. But, well, we weren't in public. We were in our home, but it was, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a sexual threat. You can't, you can't expose yourself and walk towards women. Yeah. So, I mean, nobody says, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a crime. So that alone that alone justifies asking him to leave. But no one ever brings that up. But, I mean, I'm sorry that happened to him. I mean, I, I love the guy. I mean, I, I love the guy. He's a friend. I pull for him. And, uh, you know, obviously, by watching the trailer, you know that that's something that we rehash at our homecoming. And I can't think of, like, a more fitting time for you guys to have a homecoming with, like, all the different topics that could surround your season. Like, you could point yeah. at... um you know, sexual assault being a heightened uh, thing in our social climate, um, you know, abortion. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've got what happened over the last year and a half or so with like cops being a big focal point. And then Irene's obviously got her background. I talked about it with her. Um, so, yeah, I can't even think of a better time frame for, you know, this season to take place. Well, all I can tell you is is that everything you just mentioned and lots and lots more are things that we addressed when we got to be back together and said, wow, you know, this is the crazy world that we're all living in now. And how about this issue and that issue and what we've been through? COVID, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, all of this very, very fresh, not just in the world's experience, but I mean – the people that live in the real world, we went through it too. And so here we are talking about real issues again, real issues in, in 2021. And uh, that's one thing that was really touching for me when I watched the New York season. I mean, they back in 1992, they were in New York, but in Los Angeles was the whole Rodney King thing. And, and, and that was, you know, hideous and a scar on America. And then, you know, 2021, they're literally having their homecoming in their same loft and they're looking out their window and watching a Black Lives Matter march because of the George Floyd incident. So we hasn't haven't really come very far in 28 years and we're still suffering from from racism and division. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's sad when you sit back and go, OK, these people lived in that loft in 1992 and we were dealing with this huge, hideous issue of racism and police brutality. And now in 2021, we're sitting there talking about the same thing. We haven't improved anything on either end of the country. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something that um, we can only hope for improvements in the future. But Definitely. And we, we need to pray for it. Yeah. I mean, as, as a person in ministry, I just we, we need to pray for it. But uh, that's why I love the real world, to be honest, because we're talking about real issues. I mean, I'm not talking about, oh, we just finished a challenge and now I'm going to fight with Anissa because I'm drunk. OK, that's that's not a real issue. I'm talking about let's let's sit down on a couch and talk about our differences and let's sit down and talk about the world's issues. And let's talk about who we are and what we represent. And let's try to make a positive difference. Let's talk to people that we would have never had a relationship with. If not for this reality show, I never would have met Irene, David, Tammy, Beth, Beth. I mean, I never would have even met you, much less had a circle of friends, anything like you. So I'm very, very thankful for the real world, for the homecoming, for the whole reality TV opportunity. It's It's been very... Um, it has been so valuable um, to me as an individual. I mean, it's 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 shaped me to become the man that I am at 47 years old. 
Yeah, and um, I wanted to do get into uh, some challenge stuff. Um, when looking at your career retrospect, of course, this has been a hot debate. So I want to ask you, um, and this was a question that um, we had one of my followers wanted me to ask you. Everybody's been talking recently about your first challenge season, the uh, Road Rules All-Stars, whether or not that should be classified as an official challenge season. Where do, where do you lie on the side of the fence? Well, I mean, it was the first challenge that ever existed. It was yeah. uh, a bunch of real-world All-Stars. Okay, It was Eric Nice from the first season, me from the second season, Rachel from the third season in San Francisco, Sean from the Boston show and Cynthia from the Miami show. So they picked five really all stars from the real world and said, okay, you're going to do what the real world. No, you're going to do road rules. Okay. So you got the real world people doing road rules. We're, we're competing together, not against each other together to ap- accomplish the mission, like road rules, and if you do all of the, accomplish all of the missions, you get the handsome reward, right? And so we we were competing against the mission together as a team. So the real world, or excuse me, the challenge has has evolved. It has changed. But our first mission on that show was to compete as real world all stars against the road rules team, the current road rules team. That was our first mission in Lake Placid, New York. So it was real world all-stars against the road rules season. I can't remember the name of it. And we competed in, in, in Lake Placid, New York. So, I mean, it was the real world versus road rules challenge. That's what the challenge started out as. Real world versus road rules challenge. And then it became just the challenge because they wanted to put people from other reality shows on there. But it used to be the real world road rules challenge. And so, yeah, it was the first challenge and, you know, people get butt hurt because they weren't on it and they don't want to consider it a challenge, but guess what? I hadn't been on many since then. And all the people that don't want to consider it a challenge have been on the last 25. And so, you know, they can just chill out. (laughs) I don't, I don't get really defensive except when people don't just say, Hey, I wasn't part of something that was pretty cool. And that was where it started. Would you say that the word prequel would be a good term to use when it comes to that season because it almost feels yeah. like that's what it was. It was like an inception yeah. season because you got road rules well, and real world coming together to create yeah. this grand picture yeah. of a show. Yeah, and 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 again, nobody knew there would have been no real world season two in Los Angeles if the real world season one New York wasn't watched and successful. Yeah, and there would have never been. You know, back to New York, Boston, Hawaii, San Francisco, you know, Denver. There would have been none of that if they hadn't all been successful. So there would be no challenge. There would be no All-Stars challenge. There would be no nothing if the Road Rules Real World Challenge wasn't a success. I mean, the network would have stopped if it didn't make money and didn't have viewers and wasn't successful. So... I mean, I think that honestly, the fact is that the challenge has been on the t- on TV screens for a very long time. It's a huge success just to, just for the fact that it's on season what thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty sevens right now. Yeah, yeah, and they've got three uh, all star seasons at least. So newsflash: this is a big success. I mean, props <laughs> to the network, props to Buna Murray Productions, props to everybody involved because this thing's huge. Like this is a success and I was not a part of the success other than, you know, I got to be on it and, and, uh, experience some great experiences, but, um, the people that make the show, they guess what? They know what they're doing and they're doing a great job or it wouldn't be on TV. Shows don't stay on TV if they're not successful. Bottom line. Definitely. And, uh, your second season was coming at a time in which obviously there was a big problem going on in the world. There was, 9-11 post 9-11 were you hesitant at all to step onto that season because of obviously the problems that have transpired in the world ah, man, you have done your research you have done your research uh because i was sitting at lunch after church on a sunday afternoon and my my cell phone rang because i just had had a cell phone for like two years and it was it was 
I had to look at my passport. It was a week or two after 9-11. And what happened was my roommate David was down in uh, Cabo San Lucas with Beth, my other roommate, and they were a team to compete in the Battle of the Seasons. Uh, Battle of the Seasons 2 or 1? I don't know which one. It was 1. Okay. So when you Wikipedia that season, it says 2002. But I feel like it wasn't, and maybe it aired in 2002. But I feel like it was really, really, really soon after 9 11. It was. Yeah, because my first question was they said, John, David's really sick. He drank some bad water. He's, he's out of the competition. Can you come replace him and be best partner? That's how I even got cast on the show. Uh, they wow. didn't cast me. Uh, newsflash, they didn't cast John on the challenge, but I had to come and replace David because everyone was already there. And my first question was, can I even get on a plane? Like, have we started flying yet? Yes, yes, you can fly. We need to get you to an airport and uh, you're going to fly to Mexico. I'm thinking I was scared to death. I flew from Nashville to Dallas and Dallas to Cabo San Lucas. And when we got I mean, of course, everybody it's a week after 9-11. People are freaking out like they're looking all over the airport and the plane. And this is really crazy, crazy times. And we're on an airplane. And I land and they say, okay, John, glad you're here. Everyone else is on the beach. I'm like, good, because that was weird. Just getting off of that plane was weird. So let's go to the beach. They're like, no, no, no. You're going to the next hangar. You're going to skydive in 20 minutes. Everyone else is waiting on you. They've just jumped out of a plane. I'm like, wow, talk about being baptized with fire. I'm going to get out of this plane and jump on a plane. So yeah, it was post 9-11, but only by like a couple of weeks. I remember my first question being, I don't even think I can get on a plane. Are they flying? And they said, yes. So it was, it was very strange. Um, those are the things, those are the stories that really aren't told because they air, you know, weeks and months after the fact. So no one really tells the viewers, Hey, by the way, all these cast members were really freaking out because they stepped on an airplane 10 or 12 days after nine 11. I feel like that's a detail that shouldn't have been left out though. When airing that show. Yeah, and you know who knows uh, the rhyme, the reason. Of course, they don't know when it's going to air, and you know they said so many things about entertainment, like stop showing the you know the tragedy. We got to move on with life. Let's let's you know there were so many different things that were being said. So who who knew what the right answer was, and and who knew maybe the cast members did discuss all of that. It just wasn't you know left in. Uh, like 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 the New York cast on their homecoming said, uh, remember when we lived here, the Rodney King thing was happening in Los Angeles and we we discussed it in this house. But, um, it you know, they edited it out and it never made it never made the show because you just don't know if it's a wise idea to let that be part of it or, you know, not. And, and how, how how is that going to age? Because here we are on a no one ever heard of a streaming no one ever believed in the mid '90s that we're going to be subscribing to streaming, and Paramount Plus is now where all these shows are going to be. And so that wasn't even a thought on the internet forever. Now we're not just talking about it's going to be on MTV until a new season comes out, and then they'll slowly stop showing yours. No, this is going to be streaming. It's on the internet, on your phone, anytime you want it. And so. I think there's a lot of calculated decisions about what's included and what's not because of how it's going to age. I mean, we're going to be watching these homecomings 30 years from now on some platform that we've never heard of. So I want to ask you about um, another one of uh, your roommates who I feel gets kind of like a raw deal. You know, like I feel like uh, she's she's a bit misunderstood. She's a bit misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> I already know who you're talking about. I want to talk about Beth, Beth S. Do you feel like she's misunderstood Beth! on these shows? Yeah, she's misunderstood. I mean, um, Beth is a dear, dear friend. And anyone that's ever watched my season knows that Beth and I are very close. We've remained good friends. Um, and she is misunderstood. Now, she gets to be on all of these challenges, so it's she's good TV. I mean, and no yeah. doubt about it, she's good TV. Because she stirs up the drama and she still can't figure out why people call her a drama queen, even on our trailer for the homecoming. That's 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 already. I just can't figure out why people didn't like me. I just don't know. Watch the shows. Why they didn't like me. I'm like, well, first of all, stop saying 
why people didn't like me. <laughs> That's one reason. But um, yeah, she 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 stirs up drama. I mean, she just does. She doesn't mean to, and she doesn't realize she's doing it. But she uh, she's a drama queen, <laughs> and uh, I love her. I mean, she's awesome. But she's misunderstood. She's a good good person. She does well. She 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 doesn't stab people in the back. She does her friends really really well. She does what she thinks is the right thing all of the time. I mean, she, but people do misunderstand her because she's always, you know, kind of in the mix of things. And you always think she's, you know, being conniving even when she's not. And uh, she gets a raw end. But I will say this. Sometimes it's her own doing. Like I told her something the other day. I'm like, Beth, if you hadn't done this, then people wouldn't have thought that. She goes, why didn't you tell me? I'm like. Because we're old. You don't tell people what to say and do when you're our age. I mean, do what you want to do. But if you're asking me, why do people think this of me? Let me tell you a couple examples real fast. John, you're supposed to tell me. I'm like, you do you. You know, you do you. I will say she is genuinely herself. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I, I was like on the last All-Stars, the first one. Um, she gosh. was hilarious. Yeah, she, she was, was hilarious. So I think. I think that was probably the happiest she's looked on a challenge. I would well, say. She, she and Cyrus are such good friends. Uh, they both live in LA and they hang out and they, for a lot of years. And, uh, you know, Cyrus is my friend too, but they're, they're really, they're really close. And so they got eliminated and, and funniest thing I've ever seen on a challenge ever was on the all-stars uh, season one. And, you know, Cyrus is just mad. He's just like, you know, you can see it, you can hear it. He's furious. And Beth's just going, well, I had a good time. And I just thought that was hilarious. I mean, that's funny TV. I mean, you got one guy that that's so mad he could spit. And Beth's just like, yeah, I'm disappointed. I had a good time. <laughs> it's just, the contrast was hilarious. Yeah. That, whole, that whole season was really funny. I mean, tech was funny. It, it was so lighthearted. Yes, who obviously ended up being the winner is like the world's coolest guy. Like, I'm glad he won. Yes, is just a good dude. Like we, one hundred percent. We got eliminated uh, at the same time. He and Veronica and Beth and I got eliminated on season five, the Battle of the Seasons in Cabo San Lucas, and uh, we were just getting to know each other. And so we ended up sharing a hotel room before we flew out, and we stayed up all night just talking. Yes, and I, and I mean, till like four in the morning, we just were like talking like we'd known each other our whole lives, and then we're like, so we're getting eliminated, wouldn't? The next time I saw him was at Mark Long's birthday party this past July or this past June in Los Angeles. I'm like, so I hadn't seen you in 20 years. And it was just so crazy. And, uh, dude, he is, he's a great dude. I mean, anybody that's ever watched yes on a show or, you know, met him, he's just, he's just that cool dude. He's one of the outliers, you know, like, um, you, you, we mentioned it before about, you know, the kind of the demographic in which um, some people that are on the shows, we kind of lack those like true nice guys that are just there, yeah. like kind of yeah. like yourself. But yes, is one of those outliers that just yeah. in a pool amidst a bunch of crazies, there's that one gem. And uh, yeah, and that was yes. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Nehemiah was hilarious on the show. Uh Tech was hilarious on the show. Beth was funny. I mean, there was some real uh, big easy that he lives in Kentucky and, uh, you know, where I'm from and and we've become friends. I love that guy. But yes, I love one of my favorite things ever said on any of these shows when he when he says, I don't make alliances and I don't shake hands. He's like, I'm here. Do you remember him saying that? I'm yeah. here to compete. I don't shake hands. I don't make deals. I'm here to compete. I'm here to win. I'm not here to stab you in the back, nor am I here to shake your hand. I was like, that's a stand up dude right there. He's making no bones about the fact that he's here to win. And he's, you know, he's not trying to play dirty. He's just trying to win. And he's straight up to your face telling you that. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, definitely. I um, Hopefully we see him in the future, you know. Did you get to go on any uh, bar appearances post shows or any like speaking engagements? Was that a thing bar for you? Uh, I went on tour. I mean, I, I took the exposure from the show in all of the 90s. I was doing country music uh, at a lot of county fairs and some state fairs. Some of the shows were by myself. Hey, come see the guy from the real world. And, you know, a thousand people would show up to see my concert, not because I had great music they knew, 
but because they'd seen me on the real world. And, uh, you know, I did some public appearances at like some colleges and things, but mostly it was concerts. Uh, but, you know, that eventually fizzled out right about the year um, 2000 and 2001. Um, all of that kind of stopped for me. Uh, just because there were so many other shows. And at that point I was kind of old news and uh, you know, anybody that was interested in reality TV was right. Watching the newer seasons. MTV had kind of stopped showing my season, the real world. Why? Well, they had eight new ones. And so uh, they had beat ours to death and milked it for every marathon it was worth. And, and they stopped showing it. So I stopped being famous right about that time. And uh, I mean, I don't know what else to call it. Like I stopped being recognized on the street. And it, it would just, you weren't famous anymore. And so, you know, to get on the, the challenge in 2000 and, you know, one or two, whenever that was. And then I was on in 2005 and then I haven't been on since then. My phone literally had not rung from 2005 until 2020. That is, that's just crazy. 15 years. That's, that's true story. I mean, my phone literally didn't ring. And it, it wasn't that they weren't pulling for me or wishing me well. It was just they didn't need me on any of their shows. And I wasn't getting the call until somebody said, hey, let's reunite these old real world seasons. Well, I mean, I think I could speak on behalf of a lot of people. We're glad to see uh, you back in particular, but just all you guys back. I'm looking forward to um, you know checking it out when it premieres on uh, yeah. no November 25th, I believe it is. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving, November 24th. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know, the day before or midnight, I don't know, they're advertising the 24th, it, it begins streaming, so uh, I think that might be the day before Thanksgiving, whatever, you sit around the house and watch us on Thanksgiving, uh, you know, that'll be good family time, but my, uh, <laughs> hey, any of, your, any of your listeners or podcasters, follow me on social media, I'm on Instagram at John Brennan underscore com, on Twitter and Instagram, and I got a Facebook page, and and uh, they got the blue badge on now, so you know it's really me, because who would really want to impersonate me? <laughs> you got to be really bored to pretend to be John from the real world. <laughs> <laughs> but my yeah. album comes out, my album, my brand new EP, I'm so excited about it. I, I wrote three of the five songs on there. I co-wrote three of the five songs, and it's called I Ain't Done Singing Yet. And it's going to be on my website, johnbrennan.com, uh, starting Tuesday, November the 9th. So before the homecoming airs, my, my music will already be out. All right, yeah, I'll plug that, and I uh, appreciate you coming on today. Um, Thank you, dude. It was a pleasure chat with you. I'll be sure to sit TV side with my uh, turkey and stuffing come uh, the day your guys <laughs> premiere. <laughs> oh, you're going to see some turkeys, all right. Oh, yeah. Seven of them. Seven turkeys. <laughs> Paramount <laughs> Plus. Real World Homecoming Los Angeles. You'll see turkeys. All right. Take care. Have a nice rest of your day. I'll let you know uh, when this is out. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Take Bye. care. Good one.